We're high court enforcement agents. We've got high court bit. I'd like to sort this out face to face. Debts of over £12 billion are owed to people across the UK. £1,200 and never got it back. And many of them struggle to get paid what they're due. It now looks like she's avoiding to deal with this matter. When all other attempts to settle the debt have failed... Okay, so new job. Specialist enforcement agents are called in to recover what's owed. Your time of expiry has come. Armed with a high court writ... All checking desks are going to be closed until this matter's resolved. The agents have the authority... If you think we're doing something illegal, call the police. Expertise... Everyone can be found. We're easy. And the backup... We've made contact. We know they're there. ...to settle debts that no one else can. Our agents use as a last chance saloon. They take payments in cash. £6,200. Or seize and sell possessions. Cars would take the controller. I need to get one. ...to finally get the debt paid. This is 70 grand here. In these unprecedented times, agents are busier than ever. Ooh, wanna put but the challenge to recover the money from those that won't pay... Doesn't need to be this difficult, does it? No, well, I think it will be this time. ...has never... Damn, don't touch me! ...been greater. He's going to call his brothers. I don't think it's to pay. Got feeling a bit tired today. It's been a been a bit of a long weekend, and obviously having the two young kids, they don't like you uh, let you sleep in too much. Coffee, Red Bull, Luke Sade, the whole lot. <laughs> it's an early start for two teams of agents with High Court writ to enforce. Nothing like our morning stop for breakfast. <laughs> and they need to be ready for whatever the day brings. Every job that we deal with, there is an element of conflict. The debtors are put into quite a, a stressful scenario that they're probably not used to. When we show up to an address, you don't know what we're going to expect. Over the years, you build up some sort of defense mechanism inside you that says, when you go there, you're going to stay nice, you're going to stay happy, even if they're coming at you with knives. We don't know what people are suffering from on the other side of that door. A lot of the time, they bury their head in the sand. They don't know what to do. Uh, and so this is why it's important to say, look, it may not feel like it, but we are here to try and help you through it. But at the same time, we have a job to do for the claimant, and people need to understand that the other people are affected as well. Just because you cannot pay the bills doesn't mean the other person is not being affected. And ultimately, we have to do what we're commanded to do. We're there for full payment or removal of the goods. First up for agents Chris and Gavin is finding a man who hasn't paid a bill of over £4,000. So the claimant name on the writ is a surveying company. So all we know is money owed to them. This debt is in respect of unpaid fees for an inspection on a party wall. The judgment was entered last year. So we've instructed Gavin and Chris to collect the debt on behalf of the client. The agents have a name, but can't be sure he lives at the address they're going to. It's very hit and miss on this one. If it is going to be the, the, uh, the same guy that we've found some information on. If it is the same guy, it'd be great, because then at least we know we'll be able to contact this guy, even if he's not here. Right, let's go and have a little chat. Hello there, can you come to the door, please? Turn the lights off. Oh, wait, that's turned on. No one comes to the door. But there's a clue as to who might live there outside. The person we're actually looking for at the moment is actually not in. But after checking evidence on the boxes, it's left his telephone number. And the name on the boxes matches the person they are looking for. Well, it's good to know that he'd reside. Boxes don't lie. Chris tries the number. Please press one. Hi, it's Chris here. I'm an enforcement agent. I've got quite an important matter I need to discuss with you in relation to a high court writ we hold on you. He does have a ring doorbell, so he's probably watching us at the ring doorbell and just totally ignoring us. They haven't found him yet, 
but they're one step closer to getting their clients' money back. Tracking down elusive people is one of the biggest challenges for agents trying to enforce high court writs. Sorry to disturb you. We're looking for the landlord. They leave no stones unturned. Be careful. It might be dog poop. That's what shows blue. As they attempt to at least engage with people about their debt. Alex and Casey are on the trail of someone who so far proved tricky to find. So we are in the delightful Burnley this morning. The weather is decidedly awful and um, we wouldn't have it any other way, would we? No. Mm -hmm. That's on their uh, tourism leaflets, you know. I can believe it. If you want to see proper rain, come to Burnley. <laughs> The man they're looking for has been pursued by a local council for a debt of over £12,000. This is quite an unusual debt. It relates to an unpaid penalty. The debtor actually failed to obtain the correct licence for a property he was letting out in the Burnley area. This particular debtor has actually been quite hard to track down, but we believe we may have found him. What's the house number? Because we're here, please. Oh, it's here, yeah. This is the pub. Are oh, we going to the pub? OK. So, this is a guy who owes £12,904.12. Really? Yeah. We have looked for this guy before, but the other addresses he's been damped from. So, this is a new trace address. They support their football team, apparently, because their whole team's on the wall. Nice murals. If the agents find evidence that the man is living at the pub, they could seize his belongings to sell and recover the money owed. Rain or storm, out we come. When you turn up at an address, there's no way of knowing whether there's someone who is highly aggressive behind the door or whether someone is, is very, very nice and, and invites you in for a cup of tea. Try the back. People very quickly assume that we're there because we're, we're bully boys and we're not very nice and we're just taking money off people, but we're not like that. I'm not like that. We're only human, and we see the difficulties that people go through. See if you can get to the flats. Yeah, I am. Thanks, boss. Wouldn't know to do it without you. There's no sign of anyone at home. Look, look, Casey, look. But the female licensee of the pub has the same surname as the man they're looking for. So they're going to be the governors of the pub? Alex? thinks he could be the pub landlady's husband. All right, let's go and take I'm just asking what you're doing. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, what are you doing? Can I ask who you are? No, I'm just asking. I ask the question first. I ask the question first. Sure. Sir, sir, sir. We have no reason. Reason. For a start, you're not going to get yes, anywhere with that attitude. Sir. You're not going to get anywhere with that attitude. I'm not talking to you. You just shut your mouth. All right, let's go. Right, I'm sir. To As I, I ask the question first, yeah? Yeah. You answer my question, then I'll I will. I will. The man says, He's the person they're looking for. I've just told you. We're here on behalf of the High Court. Yes, we've okay? We have a writ for yourself, yeah. so we are not going to speak to you. Yeah. Just to let you know, just to let you know, these we're wearing cameras yeah, for our safety. There's a camera there, look. This, and this, a death camera there. This, and this camera. Let me finish. Come off in a bit. Hey, Casey. Hey, Casey. Hey, Casey. Take that, take that. As quickly as he arrived... Sir. Sir. The man is off again. Coming up, Chris lays down the law. We're not arguing a toss of do you owe the money or do you not owe the money. Legally, right now, you do owe it. And Casey and Alex finally enter the pub. I don't need your permission. I have the permission from the High Court. Every year, local authorities have to use enforcement to chase more than £500 million in unpaid bills and fines. Councils say it's vital they recover money owed so it can be spent on public services. Rain or storm, out we come! In Lancashire, 
High Court Enforcement Agents Alex and Casey are trying to find a man who owes over £12,000 to the local council. Casey, look. They believe he lives at or is connected to a local pub. Are they going to be the governors of the pub? But he may have already slipped through their grasp. I'm off in a bit. Enjoy your day. Sir. Sir. He claims to be the owner of the pub. So we tried to explain to him what we're here for. He didn't care. And then he just drove off. These are the worst kind of people, the, the evaders, that won't even listen. The man they're after was successfully prosecuted and fined for not having the license required to rent out property in a certain area of Burnley. The unpaid criminal penalty was converted by the court into a debt of £10,000 plus costs. I think it's important for people to understand that, that you'll always be found. It doesn't really matter what you do to try and hide, and some people make it more difficult than others, but you'll always be traceable. It's very difficult in this day and age to hide. Suddenly, someone comes to the door. Hello, sir. I've got the landlady. Oh, on perfect. The door. Okay. And the pub's landlady gets on the phone to the agents. Um, we're looking for, for. Well, because we have a warrant from the High Court to attend this premises. Thank you, sir. I don't know if there's anything that you know about. But are you able to get him on the phone to give us a call back? The woman confirms the man they're looking for does live at the premises, but claims he only rents a room upstairs. She says she's on her way, but wants them out of her pub. We will be waiting inside for you, OK? I know you don't want to, I understand that, but unfortunately our instructions come from the higher authorities. I don't need your permission. I have the permission from the High Court. I know, but I have permission from the High Court. Okay, all right, that's fine. We'll start taking an inventory of goods. Okay, do you have a turn the lights on, please, sir? Can you turn the lights on? Uh, Looks like we're gonna have to remove goods from the property, sir. Our job is to assess those people who, who can pay and, and don't want to and those people who genuinely can't or are struggling. So the first obstacle is actually getting that person in front of you. And that can be very, very difficult. But the minute we tell them you're risking losing your goods, your cars, your property, your business even, that's when they'll start to engage. As Alex and Casey home in on one debtor, it's Chris here, I'm an enforcement agent. I've got quite an important matter I need to discuss with you. Gavin and Chris are still trying to track down a man who owes over £4,000. Chris. Yeah? Uh, the lady said that if you knock the door and you don't hear the dogs, that means he's taking the dogs for a walk. I don't think he's gone too far. The agent think they have the right address, but so far there's no sign of their man. Chris does some more research online. I've done some searches on his name, and it comes through that there's a, a guy who shares the same name that's based in London that has a catering company. I want to do some more research, because if he is that person, then we might be able to contact him through his business. If the agents can link the man to a business he runs, they may be able to find assets he owns at the company to help repay the money owed. Chris and Gavin try the door again. And this time, there's a response through the smart doorbell. I'm a court enforcement agent. Is there any chance we, we can give you a call on the mobile to have a chat about it? Chris explains the situation. At the moment, we're at enforcement stage one. What that means is, it's the first time we've made contact with you, OK, and we've given yeah. the opportunity to pay before we have to do anything further. Yeah. So at the moment, your balance is £4,150. Pounds. That's how much it is if we do nothing else with it. The man explains that he wants to challenge the outstanding bill in court, as he feels he was overcharged for the work. Here and now, we're not arguing a toss of, do you owe the money or do you not owe the money? Legally, right now, you do owe it. It's quite common for us to find that people do have the ability to pay, but they just are refusing to pay. With those ones, once we've got our teeth into them, we don't want to let go. 
And if we come back again, even if it's tomorrow, we'll be at enforcement stage two. That means automatically your debt will actually rise to 4,747. All right, see you soon. Bye. Bye. Chris checks if the businessman he found online is the same person he's just spoken to. So if we go now to his video, let's see if it sounds like the same voice. Yeah, it's him. Sounds... No, 100% him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they have their man. If they need to, the option to look for property he owns at his business is in play. I'd explain to him he pays it now, and he can still argue the matter later. But he's refusing, purely refusing. It's not a case of, you know, he can't pay. He's just actually refusing to pay. Chris and Gavin move on to their next case. Thank you very much. But the man calls back sooner than expected. As soon as you've done that transfer, let me know. I'll speak to the office. They can confirm it's in the bank. And it's good news. Although he still disputes the original bill, he makes payment in full. And that's the end of the matter. And obviously your solicitor then can do with it in your own time. You never know. If you do win it, then it could be a different phone call when you're asking us to support you. It's nice to hear that they've actually spoke to a solicitor has given them the right information. Do you know, we hear it so often where solicitors are like, no, no, don't pay him anything, don't talk to him, don't open the door, we'll fight it. And before you know it, we've basically then had to charge him more. As Chris and Gavin wrap up their first case, Alex and Casey are still trying to speak to a man who owes over £12,000. He was prosecuted by a council for not having the license required to rent out a property. Someone claiming to be him has already slipped through their fingers. Sir. And the landlady of the pub, where the agents think he's staying, isn't happy either. Although she's cooperative at first, she's now decided to be uncooperative because she's asked us to leave the pub and we, we won't because we don't have to. I, I, quite, I find it quite amazing um, that, that people don't understand that this, this is from the courts and unfortunately the courts are a higher authority than anyone else. Casey speaks with her on the phone. Yeah. How long are you going to be? And tries to find out more about her connection to the man they're looking for. Your husband is your husband, I believe, yeah? Your dad? Okay, right, okay. So she said it's her father. Oh, it's her father. It's her father, so, so he lives here and he works elsewhere. The agents need to see if the man has any assets on the premises. Seizing them could be a way to repay what's owed. So which one is his room? So I can knock the door. But the man's daughter isn't giving anything away. Okay, well, if you want to be uncooperative, man, and I am going to wait by the door here so we have access upstairs. We're here on a high court writ. Right, I'll see you in a minute, ma'am. She says she'll be here in 15 minutes. It's the closest Alex and Casey have got to recovering a debt that's been owed for over a year. In London, Chris and Gavin are en route to another job. When people actually ask me what do I do as a job, and I say enforcement agent, you know, um, we collect on, on unpaid debts. We get people going, oh, I don't know how you can do that job. How do you sleep at night? That's what we hear a lot. But I actually say, right, think of it the other way around. If you are owed that money, what are you going to do? So once we explain that, their mindset changes straight away. And normally it ends in, oh, actually, I am actually owed some money. How can you help me? Right, OK. Like the first, their new case also involves an outstanding bill owed by a homeowner to a business providing property services. Unpaid debt has a huge impact on the claimant. It stops them, for example, running their own business, paying their own staff, their own overheads. After months of waiting, the business may finally get their bill paid. What the money's owed for is it's in relation to some dispute in relation to a wall that's at a property that this guy owns. So I think he might rent that property out but lives at this property. And they're just looking for the curtains. So anyway, it's surprising they're gone. Looking for the curtains? Yeah. Bottom curtain just wobbled. 
The person inside might have already clocked them, but the agents spy something of interest too. It must be him there. Let's just knock him and see what's going on. The High Court writ gives Chris and Gavin the authority to take control of the car, if it belongs to the person who owes the money and payment isn't forthcoming. Hello, sir. Sorry to bother you. My name's Chris. I'm an enforcement agent with a High Court writ. So, first of all, can I confirm that's obviously your vehicle there with your number plate, yeah? Fantastic. So, the reason why I'm here, sir, is a High Court writ has been issued against yourself. Um, it's in relation to a property that I believe you may own and possibly rent out. This address no, here? No, I don't rent out. No? Okay. Right. But you know what the property's about, yeah? Do you, do you know what this is? It's uh, in relation to a wall or fence, is that uh, right? Yeah, let me, let me explain, bro. The situation is that I'm going through a divorce right. with, my, with my ex wife so I have come on this. Right, I have no access to this property. Right. She lives in that house right now, and I haven't been to that house for two and a half years. Right. And I have not had no correspondence about anything to do with that house. She actually only last week started to send me some, like, uh, pictures with some letters that have come through. Maybe yep. through this, I don't know. Okay. So I haven't had a chance to pick that up yet. The man claims not to know how the debt came about. Oh, what I got okay. was a letter last week from you guys it, right, report, saying yeah. that there was an amount that was old and that's all I know. Okay. But no other correspondence except for that. The thing is I haven't got round to speak to you guys so I can go call day tomorrow to ask to my divorce situation. When a High Court writ is issued, we literally just get a name on, on a writ. We don't always get the backstory on why that money's owed. And sometimes you hear their side of the story and you think, oh, well, actually, it sounds quite harsh. You know, they seem like they've got a good argument. I'm I'm going on, but I don't know anything about this. The person okay. who know actually, actually anything about this is my ex-wife. But when we are there, we're not there to judge, you know? We have to switch off our emotions on that and have to deal with that writ as commanded. You'll serve the notice of enforcement, which is a letter you said you saw last week. Because you haven't dealt with that, I know you've got other things going on, we all do. You've chosen not to deal with that. The best advice I can give you now is pay it. If the debtor doesn't feel that they've been treated fairly, there is an appeal process. But we're there purely to act on a writ. At the moment, the amount of money which is owed um, by yourself is £2,186.96. If you tell me you're unable to pay that, we are commanded to take control of goods to clear your debt. Okay, the vehicle could be the item we take away. Although he's the only person named on the writ, the man believes he's still not liable to pay the bill. How can you reassure that if I pay for that, yeah, right, that I'm going to get that money? Oh, I can't. And I'm being honest with you. No, no, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you exactly how it is. You're not even let me know whether I can get that money back. All you're, you're no. doing is just going to take my money. No. I can quite easily lie to you and say, yes, you'll get it back, but I'm not like that. I'll tell you the truth. And the truth is, right now, you are liable for this debt. Coming up, Casey and Alex finally come face to face with the man they've been looking for. I'm denying you access. And you want to talk to me, talk to me outside. And Chris and Gavin up the ante. Sorry, sorry, you can't, no, no, you can't get in the car. You can't tamper with Chris in control. Nearly £25 billion worth of late invoices are owed to companies across Britain. With the restrictions of the pandemic, enforcement agents cannot enter residential homes. So often, it's vehicles that are seized to help recover money owed to companies who haven't been paid. Agents Chris and Gavin are attempting to recover a debt owed to a building surveyor. But the man named on the writ claims he doesn't know how the debt came about. It's okay, in relation to us taking... I'm not going to pay for money, I don't know nothing about it. And isn't comfortable paying the bill without finding out more. How am I supposed to get that money back, though? I'm, I'm never going to see that money back. Okay, so like I said to you, here and now, you legally owe it. If you don't agree with it, once you pay it, then you can deal with it later by a solicitor. But now, our job is purely to take control of goods right now. Well, are you going to take goods or what? We can quite easily look at your taking your vehicle away. No, you can't take my vehicle. Why can't we? Well, I don't know. I, can't, I don't want to say about that. No, why? I'm not going to argue with you, okay. so I don't know. The man wants more time to seek legal advice. But with a High Court writ, the agents have the authority to settle the debt today. 
It's now five o'clock. I'm going to give you 10 minutes to get your thoughts together. At that point, I'd expect you then to say, right, I'm going to try and make that payment. Did you give me, look, I'll, I'll give you five, 10 minutes now. Oh, look, now you're reduced to five minutes. Well, I'll give you 10 minutes, that's fine. 10 minutes, have a think, make up the phone calls and we'll speak in 10 minutes, all right? He's saying to us it's the first he's heard of it, well, other than last week. So the good thing is he did receive the letter, the compliance letter, and sadly he's refused to deal with that letter. So the best thing for us to do now is basically step away, let him just process that information, and hopefully in five, 10 minutes time, he'll come out and go, yep, yeah, I realize I now need to deal with this. If he doesn't want to deal with it, then we have no choice then but to look to take the vehicle away. When I know they can pay and they're just trying to be stubborn, it can be frustrating that we can't help the claimant in getting their money back. But once I start moving stuff, I think people start realizing that, oh, hold off a minute, he's actually being serious. £2.50 a point. I think I'll come and live in Burnley. In Lancashire, Casey and Alex came face to face with a man claiming to be who they're looking for. What are you doing? How you doing, sir? Okay. Yeah, what are you doing? But he slipped through their grasp. Come off in a bit. Do you, do you, do you know? They're inside a pub where they believe the debtor is living. We're about 100 yards from Turf Moor, Burnley's home ground, so this is obviously a uh, match day pub, I would imagine. They've even got a lager after Sean Dyche, the manager. The debt relates to renting out property without a license that was brought in to help regenerate the community. It was a criminal offence. A court issued him with a penalty of £10,000 plus costs. He failed to pay. So agents have been trying to speak to him for months. You have to treat each case individually, no matter what the case is, because you don't know the circumstances of the person. There may be a very reasonable explanation why the money's owed, why they haven't been able to pay it. And the fact that they owe the money, a lot of the time means it's because they buried their head in their sand. They, they don't know what to do. The agents are waiting for the pub's landlady who says she's the debtor's daughter, but someone else turns up instead. What's your name? I'm denying you access. That's right. Right. The man confirms he is who they're looking for. So, not the person who spoke to the agents outside after all. And I walked through this door and I said, I live up there and I'm denying you access. Yeah, we can't leave the premises, so that's the difference. So let's explain it to you and find out what's happened, all right? So you've been fined by the council for some kind of licensing issue. For not filling the form in. The man claims he was in an impossible position. There was somebody who couldn't get out of it. And the reason I couldn't get out of it was because the council were paying his rent. Right, okay. I can't throw him out, which I tried to do. I tried my best to ask him to leave. He was supposed to be a friend of mine. And the council kept paying the rent for the tenant, even though I didn't have the license. But continuing to let the property to the tenant has left him with a bill of over £12,000. So, because you couldn't get him out, that's when the, the fine occurred. Have you got a solicitor? Have you got one? Yeah, but I'm not prepared to pay a solicitor to look at this. She wants 500 quid. There's another one. Another one wants to buy a tick cherry. Give me 500 quid and I'll talk to you. Although a court found him guilty of the offence and ordered the penalty to be paid, the man insists he was helpless. What were they doing paying the rent to somebody who didn't have a licence? Okay. What were they doing paying rent? So they're actually making me guilty. I'm in a court here and I'm saying, what have I done? I'll tell you what I've done. Nothing. I've failed to fill a form in. End of story. As Casey and Alex look for a way forward, Chris and Gavin are looking for solutions too. What's the uh, estimated value on the vehicle? Okay, so around 10,000 we're expecting. Brilliant. It's got a few scratches and stuff, but it's uh, still worth taking. The agents are considering seizing a man's car in order to recover money owed to a building surveyor. At the moment, he owes 2,186. If he fails to try and pay now, the amount will go up to just under 2,800. If he still doesn't want to pay and he's refusing, then we're going to look to remove the vehicle and the amount's going to go up again. 
30 minutes after leaving the man to make some calls, Chris tries to speak with him again. Hello there, can you come to the door please, sir? Okay, so he's not wanting to talk to us now. Tied him behind the door and he shut the door. That's it. He's panicking. It doesn't need to be this difficult, does it? No, nah, it doesn't need to be. But I think it will be this one. Back in Burnley, Alex and Casey have a tricky situation of their own. So how much is it, Alex? That's what we 12, need to know. 12,000. OK. The man continues to argue his case. What have I done? Nothing. I've failed to fill a form. And if things don't get sorted, the situation could get even worse for him. Are you really going to kick him out? His daughter, the pub's landlady, is concerned that if he's living at the property... Well, let, let's, let's, not be, let's not be hasty about it. ...the debt could have an impact on her business. We don't ever want to take goods. But we don't ever want to take your goods. That's not what we're here for. We just want to work it out. I think we have a big duty of care for the defendants. When somebody owes money, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that they can afford to pay that money. If they would have, they probably would have already paid it. Well, We're looking. Be here by then. We'll have to be all much more we don't know where these people are at in their own lives, like what they're suffering from or what they're going through. If we could get some sort of arrangement, listen to me, you want me to talk to you, so I'm going to explain it to you. What we do to try to help them is, is we'll ask them if we can put them in a payment arrangement. Is there something we could start small that would work with them? Just to start it off, if we get just even a minimal payment, it puts it on hold. And then he just enters into a, a payment arrangement, for example, each month. He then makes the appeal that he wants to do, right? And he says, this is why I believe I shouldn't be paying this, etc. Any money he's paid, if the judge agrees with him and says, no, this shouldn't have happened, he gets it all returned. Uh, we're, we're, we're working it out, sir. That's what we're talking He's more worried about being homeless right now. And we understand that. Casey thought she was getting somewhere, but they've hit a brick wall. We're working it out, sir. We just want to work it out. If we could get some sort of arrangement in place. As Casey and Alex struggle to get a dialogue going, Chris and Gavin are having the same problem. The man who owes over £2,000 to a building surveyor is no longer answering the door and he's running out of time. It's important to show some empathy when enforcing, but for me to do my job well, I have to switch off the emotions and look at the facts on the case. If you are owed that money, what are you going to do? You picking up the phone or sending them a letter might do nothing, but when we turn up, that's going to get some money moving. Hi, Paul, how are you doing? How quick can you get um, a truck to us? Yep, OK, perfect. Um, uh, if you can pencil it in, don't confirm it just yet. I'm going to give the guy another chance to see if he can get the payment together. If not, I'm going to have to book you in. What we do is give him another chance. If uh, he still doesn't want to talk to us, then it gives, him, gives us no choice then but just remove the vehicle. Him ignoring us is the worst thing he can do now because it's just, this is costing him more money. He will come out. Usually when the trucks come out, that's when they come out and they want to pay. Or they want to try and jump in the car. But generally, they tend to pay. Chris tries one more time. Hello, sir. Can you come and speak to me, please? He shouted something about banging my letterbox or something. Yeah. I don't think it's serious. The agents have only one option left. Hello, mate. Yeah, please dispatch him. And, uh, yeah, if you can uh, tell him to get here as quick as he can, that'd be great. I spoke with the tow truck. They're leaving now to come straight here. So all of this is now going to go on top of his debt for a debt where if he spoke to me and, and dealt with it properly, £2,000 would have cleared it off. By the end of this, we could be looking at five. 
With the tow truck en route, the man starts to talk. I am struggling here you through a door with the cars going past. And finally, he wants to discuss paying the debt. You can pay that, sir, but that's not what the debt is right now. What is the debt? Okay, right now, sir, because the tow truck is en route, um, is 3,752.71 pence. The debt has now risen by over 50%. Why are you not paying for no truck, sir? No, I'm not paying for no truck. You just said 3,000. That's correct. 3,700. 2,000 when you pay for that. With the greatest respect, sir, most of my time out here, you refuse to speak to us. I want the phone. So I had no choice but to call for a truck. No, I'm not paying for that. That's fine. No, you don't pay then? I don't want to get in a heated discussion with you, so I'm going to leave you alone to calm down. You now know how much it is. If you want to pay it, then come and speak to me and I can tell you how to pay it. If you don't want to pay it, then you have a good day, sir, and we'll get this taken away. As the man is refusing to pay the new bill, the car will be going into storage and eventually be sold at auction to pay the debt. We've given him every opportunity to pay before it got anywhere near that, and he hasn't. He refused to deal with it. So I'm going to make sure the client is going to get their money back, and if it means selling this vehicle, we'll do that. So it's just behind my van. He's in there, so he knows about it. Just want to, yeah. Want to get up in the air before he tries to jump in. Please don't take my car with the police are on their way. Yeah, the police can come if they want. All right, well, the police are coming now. OK, that's fine. But ultimately, we've got a high court writ. OK, I, so... I understand that. We are going to put this into storage. I'm hoping that you do oh, get this dealt with. Please don't put this into However, however, if we take the keys from you, it means at least we can make sure if we do have to sell the car... Oh, please, well, please well, 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 no, please. sir, you can't please. obstruct him. No, no, no. Sir, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir, you can't... No, no, you can't get in the car. You can't no, no, get in the car. The car right. is taking control of. Oh. You can't tamper with goods in control. Coming up. Casey and Alex try to keep control. We're trying to work it out. We walk out the store, then it just goes. Get on with what you're I've just said. It. And Chris gives a final ultimatum. Yeah. If you pay for it, he won't take it. We're working it out, sir. If we could get some sort of arrangement in place. High court enforcement agents Alex and Casey are trying to negotiate a payment plan with a man who owes over £12,000 to a local council. We're trying to work it out. We walk out the store, then it just goes to further. Get on with what you've I've just said. Yeah, so what can you think that you could afford right now to get us into an arrangement to start something? Ten pound a week. Okay, I'll be honest with you. Are you working part time, full time? They're gonna check all this, so this is why I have to ask. Part -time. I just part time. How many hours roughly a week? Twenty. Okay. What we do to try to help them is ask basic questions that don't make them nervous and allow them to feel like they're still in control. Okay, what are you doing? I work for myself. Oh, okay. Doing like laboring or what? What do Pallets. you do? Pallets. Perfect. We actually tell them that we're there to help them get themselves out of debt by suggesting you, you, you make a plan. So you're looking at the bare minimum they ever take is £100 a month, the bare minimum. We get £100 down, that gives you a couple months. If you win your case, you'll get all that money back. If you lose your case, then you're already in an arrangement to start paying it off slowly. We try to help them dig their heads completely out of the sand and make them realize that, you know, they can get through this. They might not think it's help in the beginning, but they soon learn after talking to us for a little bit that we literally are there to help them. So that they can help you. Two hundred quid now. You're, you're two hundred quid now. Yeah, we're done. Two months paid. Perfect. Yeah. Finally, they come to an agreement that works for everyone. Okay, so this is your receipt. So it just has the arrangement to pay hundred pounds a month, three months, then a review for an increase. Okay. Very simple. The first repayment is sorted without any of the man's possessions being seized and no impact on his daughter's pub. All right, Paul, we'll speak to you on the first, all right? And uh, our numbers are in there. Okay, yeah. All right? Okay. All right, then, bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, see you soon. He transpired he's been fined by the council for not having the appropriate landlord's license in place, and he's been fined 10,000 pounds. 
We set him up into an arrangement. Hopefully that will help him. And, uh, you know, in a couple months we'll review it. How successful he will be in an appeal is anybody's guess. Everyone's had some form of debt in their life, you know, whether it be a credit card, a student loan, something. So we can't sit here as bailiffs and say we've never felt that, that side of it either. People have chased me for money, so I know exactly how it feels. First thing we see at the door is the human, and that's what I want them to see in us. As we're bailiffs and we're high court officers or whichever the term they want to use, we're not ogres. We're here just to make sure that the people that owe money are, are paid that money. No, no, no. Sir, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. You can't. No, no, you can't get in the car. You can't no, get in the car. The car right. is taking control no. of. You can't no. tamper with goods in control. Chris's case has reached boiling point. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll give you my word. I'll give you my word. No, no, no. I'll give you my word. He's taken possession of a car from a man who's refused to pay what's owed. Now additional fees have been added. If you pay for it, he won't take it. All right, fine, I want to pay for it, just take it. No, just go back to your house and I'll take that money. Once on the truck, I'll tell him not to drive off until we're on it. No, he's going to continue, he's going to continue. No, I'm not. No, Yeah, but you're allowing me to pay for it. Look, I will allow you to pay for it. It won't go. The car will not go. Okay. The car will not be taken away if you pay. Are you going to pay now? I'll give you the account details. The man continues to dispute the new total. Yeah, but the thing is, you put it up to three thousand pounds. You didn't right. allow to do. Anything. First of all, let's not waste the truck driver's time because he'll charge me time. So, do you want to pay for it, and then we can go through every penny why it's that much? All right. Yeah, keep going. Um, if you can do us a favour, though, once you got it on the back, just hold fire, just in case he does pay it right away. We can drop it. <laughs> Oh, that's all right. As soon as you pay, as soon as you pay, we'll put it back down, okay? Calm down, sir. No, you are necessarily taking my car away. Okay. That's unreasonable. Right. I said, don't put that car on there. Why don't you put it on there for? Why? Because I told you why. Sir, if you want to pay, then we can discuss. There's no reason why you had to put an extra thousand pounds on. Right. Sir, I'm going to I'm not get into an argument with you, okay? You and I both know how long I've been here for. Yeah, but that's okay. Is I am entitled to seek legal right. advice on something that I don't know. Okay. Of. I'll tell you what, I'll let you make the decision. Either we have a discussion about this now and I'll let my driver go. Okay, we can't accept cards, sir. It's bank, it's bank transfer or cash. So I can give you the account details, transfer the money, and okay, then we're going to close. Can you put, tell me to put the card back down? The man transfers the money. Done. It's been done. Brilliant. I'll speak to the office. As long as they see it in the bank, we can then drop your car back. And with the confirmation that the debt has been paid in full, his car is lowered back onto the drive. I'm going to do my receipt now and then I'll give it to you. All right? I'm not going to stand here. You, pay something. you can as soon as I finish writing out for you, okay? Oh, dear. So. That is a successful case. He's someone who had the money all the time, just refused to deal with the case. Don't get me wrong, it is actually big jumps, even fees. Everyone can see that. However, he could have prevented that happening, you know, by communicating to us. A few weeks later, the man made an application to the court to get the original judgment set aside. If the judge rules in his favor, he could get his money back. All right, let's do knock any knock. Next time, a case that's full of surprises. I just don't get it. I'm just gobsmacked. Game on, blood. Let me see check-in for a New York flight. Things take off at the airport. All check-in desks are going to be closed until this matter's resolved. And kick off at the office. There's no good getting upset. You fucking prick. Fuck off, you cunt. No one ever thanks us for turning up. Want a close-up? Want a close-up, mate? Yeah. Fucking idiot. And you can see that in nine at two weeks' time. Looking into a series of gruesome murders on London's train network, brand new crime documentary The Railway Killers begins next Monday at 9. After the break, it's not just another, it's THE Manic Monday for Sister Benita and the team in Casualty 24-7. Every second counts. 